Hey guys, I just thought I'd show you something kind of cool that I've been working on. Except I figured that you as an audience might appreciate this. I think it's kind of neat. So, traditionally whenever I work on my FPGA projects, I will edit the user constraints file by hand. I use a regular text editor, and I define ports that are... Uh, assigned to different uh, pads on the device which are defined by the user documentation for the particular piece of hardware I'm designing for. Which I think is how a lot of hobbyists like myself do it. Perhaps you do too. A couple of weeks ago though I discovered that uh, ISC Webpack includes a, a product called Plan Ahead which does have the capability to make this process a little bit easier. It can visually assign uh, different nets that you have, even entire ports full of nets, to uh, pads on your device. And it lets you set some of them as prohibited, say if they're like a configuration pin that you have set to um, a particular signal level and is never used as general I.O. So this was all well and good, but what I discovered is that with as few as maybe half a dozen loads and saves, uh, plan ahead will start to corrupt the user constraints file. It'll start to double assign pins, it'll start to drop assignments for pins, uh, basically be unreliable enough to where you can't depend on it to work. So I, I gave up on plan ahead this last week and I decided to make my own editor and I wanted my editor to replicate this nice functionality that plan ahead had given me to where I could visually assign my nets and the editor could uh, work with any number of devices. It doesn't have to be my particular one device. It's not hardwired for it. Uh, I wanted wanted to get that functionality in something that was more reliable. So I worked on this and it took about three days worth of free time. It really wasn't that bad. And this is what I ended up with. I've got a nice visual editor which doesn't have the floor planning capability which I didn't need. I just wanted user constraints editing but it gives you good information about the device like you would expect. It gives you a list of all of your ports with all the nets in those ports. It gives you a visual representation of your package which is even scalable. It's not hardwired to this one device. It can work with any quad flat pack package right now um, provided that you have a definition file for it. Uh, later on it'll work with BGA packages as well. But this thing needs three different things in order to work. First of all, it needs the path to the top-level module in your project, which in this particular case is this file right here. It's just very simple with some inputs and outputs. It needs um, a reference to the current user constraints file, which is this right here. And third, it needs to know what device you're working with. And based on the device you're working with, um, information is known about what you're trying to assign to in terms of what pins can do what, what they're named, where they're at, physically what it looks like, uh, default I.O. and drive strengths and all that. So those three pieces of information together can be reconciled into a list of all nets that should be in your project, the device, and the mappings between the two. Um, so for example you'll see that this program knows that uh, P100 is prohibited, it's device prohibited. It is for configuration only, you can't use it as I.O. Next to it you'll see a user prohibited pin so I've got that functionality in there as well. And this happens to be the one that controls whether or not there are pull-ups or pull-downs during configuration. I've got it wired straight to uh, the rail, so I can't use it as I.O. Um, I've also got just regular pins that have already been assigned. Uh, so let's go ahead and walk through maybe a, a common scenario that you're going to run into. Right now everything's already been assigned, but let's take out all of my LED assignments and save that. I am going to put them on my other monitor so I can remember where they're at. Okay. So let's go ahead and reload. You'll notice that these no longer have any assignments. All the pins that they were on are now gone. Um, free package pins are listed here. We can tell everything is as we'd expect it to be. So let's go ahead and work with this bus that we want to assign here. Uh, first of all, I'm going to select all pins in the net. 
I'm going to set the I.O. standard first of all, because I want that to be LVTTL. And then second of all, I'm going to assign all of those selected nets uh, visually. And it gives you a stack, so you know what order you're assigning them in. You don't have to guess. Uh, the first one goes on pin 9, and then 98, and then 94, 93, 3, 4, 5, and the last one goes on 6. But I want to demonstrate something. It's not going to let me assign it to something that's already been assigned. And it's not going to let me assign it to something that's, say, input only, because that's an output. I can't put it on anything prohibited or even user prohibited. I mean, it knows and it tells you. It tries to be very clear about what is wrong instead of giving very generic error messages, which is something that I hate about most programs. Error messages need to be useful in order to be, well, useful. All right, so we've got that. Let's go ahead and save it. And we can see that it's been modified and all of the new assignments are in there as we would expect. Let's go through another common scenario. Let's say you change what you have. Let's remove half of the switches I've got, and let's get rid of uh, the flash clock line entirely. So now we're going to have nets in here that are defined, but are no longer in the top level module. Well, whenever you load this, it can tell if there's been anything defined in the current user constraints file that's no longer in the top level module. And it tells you very clearly that if that's what you intended, that's fine, but if not, and you continue, you're going to lose the assignments. So it tries to make it very clear to the user exactly what's going on. It doesn't assume the user's going to know what happened, um, because whenever you're, you're clicking along in a project, sometimes you just don't notice uh, problems that creep up, like maybe you accidentally deleted one of your nets. Who knows? So it can deal with that. And as you can tell, I mean, all those are gone now. Uh, another common scenario you might have, well, let's add another one. Alright, so now my top of a module has something that's not in here. As you would expect, it's been uh, been added in here. I can go ahead and put this anywhere I want. And I can set it to whatever I.O. standard I want. Uh, if I want, say, a pull up or pull down, you know, whatever. Go ahead and save that. Um, as you can tell, it shows up here now. So every, everything seems to work pretty well. Uh, another common scenario, let's say you want to assign it over here. Uh, it's not going to list every, anything that's prohibited, but it will list everything else that's already been used. So let's say you, you accidentally assign it to, to 41. Well, as soon as you go out of that row, it, it saves the changes and it tells you, hey, that won't work. you got to pick something else. So it tries to give you some flexibility in what you can do. It tries to visually represent everything important where it's really quick and easy to get past your user constraints because that's the least interesting part of your project. Uh, what else? You can set drive strengths if you want. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Slew rates, drive strengths, just whatever you want. It's very happy to do so and it creates a very standard UCF file. This can even be loaded in Plan Ahead if you absolutely insist on editing it in that later. You can edit it by hand, as long as you don't make uh, formatting mistakes, which it is pretty forgiving on, by the way. Then uh, everything works pretty good. So you'll see it you know, played with these values I put in by hand just fine. It doesn't have to keep a separate tally or anything like that. So I just wanted to show that to you guys, uh, kind of give you a, an idea of something I've been working on. Hopefully you found it kind of neat and interesting. Um, maybe if you're interested in using it, let me know. I'd be more than happy to, uh, to let other people benefit from this. Let me know if you have any questions or feedback, I guess. And thanks for watching.